Well, hello there, and welcome to my little arty corner of the internet. It's Wednesday, it's the 1st of December. We're in the last month of 2021. Who'd have thought we'd get here? <laughs> sort of. <laughs> yeah, crazy, crazy year um, in weird and wonderful ways. But there we are. So, Wednesday means that it's um, when I've got my work work done for the day, I kind of settle down and focus on um, other work. And on a Wednesday, it is um, time to draw the template for tomorrow for the Facebook group, Angela Porter's Colouring Book Fans, for the members there. And I started drawing this last night. I retired to bed a bit early because I was feeling cold. And then I woke up a few hours later with hot flushes and don't start and um, I had trouble getting back to sleep and I didn't have very good sleep but I'm determined to keep myself awake because I know that's part of the problem so anyway so before I settled down to sleep I drew some of this and I'm not exactly sure where it's going I know I want to do something that's typically me so you may oh wrong pen that was a bit fine I'm using an 05 micron but I've also got an 02 uni pin out for finer details where I need it. So I started drawing cupcakes last night. I made that one just a bit, bit on the skinny side, I think. But it'll be fine. We used to call cupcakes fairy cakes when I was little. And um, they used to be smaller and they used to have icing on the top often. And lovely goodies as well, like um, sort of like sugar strands or um, druggies, which are silver ball, um, sugar balls, hard sugar balls that are covered with gold or silver, and sometimes jelly fruits or jelly tots. One of the first things I learned how to cook, if I remember rightly. My grandmother was a, a place of solace for me when I was a child and she was fab. I could go over there any time I wanted, just about, and she'd let me cook. Um, it was jam tarts and then when I progressed from making pastry to cake there would be things like um, fairy cakes or... Um, other cakes like um, Victoria sandwiches and things like that. It's quite fond memories. There. Oh, there are some of these are very, very weird looking, but do you know? It's fine. It's just nice to be able to do this. I have been working fairly hard this morning on. Um, inking in colouring templates for adorable dogs and um, it's nice to do something that's a little bit different for a change and a bit different from the sketchbook pages as well and I do know that people like uh, seem to like the uh, sneak peeks of, of this week's templates so I'm happy to supply them as it were so it's nice to draw. So there we are, we've got a lovely row of cupcakes. There's only six of them, so you know if you want to do them in rainbow colours, you're going to have to adjust a little bit and leave one colour out. Or create a, a rainbow of your own. So I'm going to fit them under a little arch because I like an arch here and there too. I haven't decided what I'm going to do in this little section down here. Oh, excuse me, my keyboard is in the way. I'm just going to move it out the way because I'm working on, um, well, it's not quite A4 paper. It's dot grid paper, so it's a little bit shorter than A4. Um, it's Claire Fontaine's um, sketch. And I like quite like this. Okay, I think I know what I'm going to do here.
fancy a fish. It struck me, it struck me yesterday. I thought, oh, I didn't do a mer dog or mer pup. Um, like a mermaid, but a dog yesterday. I thought, oh, well, might be too whimsical, perhaps, I don't know. So we'll have a fish on this one instead. He hasn't got any fins yet, so other pen. Let's just give him him or her. Looks more like a him. Just some simple fins and perhaps a couple of tiny spots. I think we could do with some more stripes here actually. We do like a stripy fish. Being vegetarian, I don't eat them, but I do rather like fish. And I like, um, particularly like seaweeds and coral and sea urchins and things like that you'd find in the sea. But there's only space really in this little section for one big fish. But perhaps I can put in a couple of smaller ones. Unfortunately, they're not going to have, they can have a little bit of a smile though. Smiley fish, who'd have thought it? Well, I'm sure there are fish that look like they're smiling. There we go. So a couple of fish though, no smile on that one, a bit more of a smile. And just for good measure, let's put some bubbles in. I will just put a line there to separate the tail from the body because that gives opportunities then for using colour. You have to be very patient and use very sharp pencils or fine liners or a tiny brush or however people want to colour this in. But it's rather lovely, it's good fun. Okay, um, these are bugging me because they just look too uninteresting. And if you've been here before and you've followed um, what I'm doing artistically, you'll know that um, I don't often use very simple shapes. I've put this in here as a pattern because I thought it'd be a bit different. It's not one that I use very often, but I do enjoy this. Okie dokes. Now then, the question is, do I keep this too entangled or do I do some doodly whirl stuff in here? So you know, cute critters, monsters and the like. Possibly because I've got these sort of like smoky or cloudy, misty area there above these little birds. See, I've got birds, I've got fish, so I've got water and air. I think we need space represented, so I think some alien-ish kinds of creatures will go down well, I think. Oh, now then, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Now I'm going to separate that tuff just a bit. There we go. So, shall I give him an antenna? Oh, I think so. There we go. With a blob on the end because you can't have enough blobs in a drawing. Okie dokes, let's have another one. Um, Give this one this. There we go. Um, I 
think that one's just all spiky, which suits me just fine and dandy. Because, well, why not, isn't it? Add some patterns to those. Okay, need another one because I need at least three odd numbers, you know. Okay, um, I'm going to give this one like that, and perhaps we'll give it a bit of a frown. Looks like an emoticon, doesn't it? But I think we might change that. Um, I think it can have tentacles growing out of its head. That's perhaps why it looks so sad. waiting a delivery today I'm quite surprised actually because um, when I ordered the item I was told it wouldn't be delivered until Friday I've had notification it's going to be delivered today my editor for um, adorable dogs what for all the creative haven stuff apart from the first couple of books um, a different editor there she mentioned in an email that the best thing she's brought, bought herself has been a heated lap blanket. And I thought, there are such things. I, I know about heated blankets, <laughs> but heated lap blankets, I just thought, perfect. Because I'm often almost warm enough. And to put the heating on in the house can sometimes be just too much. I get too hot too quickly and I just need that extra little bit of warmth and there are times in the day especially if I'm tired like this is likely to happen to me later on today where I'll suddenly get so tired I really get chilly and that can happen even on a hot summer's day I've always been the same you know, even as a, you know a, a young child I'd be the one feeling the cold while everybody else was sweltering in the house, you know, um, seeking out heat wherever I can. I'm sure I'm part cat, but um, perhaps that's why I have an affinity with cats. But uh, so I ordered, well, I didn't order a lap blanket because they actually worked out more expensive than a full sized fleecy heated blanket. So I thought, okay, that's bigger. That means I'll be able to snuggle under it because I am tall and I'm not a not a light lass either. Oh dear, that's a really bad hair day there. Um, my drawing. So apparently that'll be delivered today, which is quite good fun, really. Well, I think so. And hopefully before I chill off completely. I'm going to have another one when I'd monster here, I think. This is the lovely thing about drawing cute and cuddly things, monsters or whatever, is you can just do what you like, because who's to say these space alien monster things couldn't exist? Who knows? Well, they exist in my imagination, don't they? So this one's ready to eat. Oh, um, perhaps I'll just do that, just to give a couple of uh, things like that. And uh, They're always hungry, these things are. So there's a little nest of them. Could do with another one, I think. 
I know I'm going to put in. Nothing else works. Let's go with a drunken party skull. being tossed around by the tentacles because why not it's looking very confused bless it perhaps we could even have another one there perhaps the um, skulls came to party in the wrong place at the wrong time I need to turn that this way up to do these eyes, I think. I think if I colour this one in, I'm going to colour it green. I might colour them both a bit, a bit of a bilious green, because I think they would be rather... Um, sick after being tossed around by these tentacles. Oh. I'm so tempted to put some more in there, but that's perhaps not. Okay. Might have spotted. Christmassy, wintry trees. Oh, I don't know. I do want to put some candles in here somewhere, actually, because it is, it really is candle season. It's, yeah, it's noticeable how few hours of daylight we have. The sun's shining at the moment, but it's been quite grim and grey for much of the day. So... So there's nothing like having nice candlelight and nice hot drinks and such things. Okie dokes, I want to put a pan in here, but I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do. So I'm going to divide it into squares. And I may do a tangle pattern here, which is one that's Perhaps I wouldn't ordinarily do. I don't know what it's going to be though. But luckily I have my visual directory here. So I have a Luke in my book. It's something that will fit in there nicely. I think, yeah, I think I'll do this. Simply because these these shapes look a bit like holly leaves, and it's winter, and holly is associated with winter in many ways. Okay, and then we'll do the others diagonally opposite. This makes a lovely all-over pattern. I think. That Quite a few years ago, I used this to create um, Christmas cards for people special in my life, if I remember rightly. And I did use green and red pens, green to draw this, and I put some um, veins in there. But berries, because there are spaces to put berries. Am I going to put berries in? They'd be very small. But perhaps I'll leave that and I'll put some in my my sample, my coloured sample of this. Okay, so I want to connect this here because I want to seal. I'm using arches to create little spaces where there are different things going on. They help to split quite a detailed drawing up into nice sized spaces that you can you can approach them one little under arch area at a time 
and split the whole thing up so it's not so overwhelming. Okay, so I'm going to, oh gosh, so bash my glasses on the camera, which is over here. Okay. All right, let's have a look at this. Keep bashing my glasses on this camera. Welcome to my world. So I didn't really think where I positioned it. I really need to sort myself out with this because I'm, I'm doing this quite a lot, aren't I? Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do alternate squares just semicircles well, this is too small an area for me to get very detailed with oh I could get detailed with it you know I have fine pens but the thing is this is going to be a colouring template and not everybody can see well or likes extremely fine details or uses media that will colouring media that will get into these tiny places so I'm very conscious of that this makes a lovely overall pattern as well it's when you um alternate these this way so the next square up would have these kinds of semicircles and the one above it would have these kind again get the idea it's really quite an unusual kind of pattern but quite a nice one it's one I haven't looked at for ages hmm, this is something that's going to make its way onto my sketchbook page I think because I think it's time I started turning my mo some of these motifs that I've been drawing into repeating patterns. Right. Just focus on this, Angela. You, I nearly filled some one of these little gaps and I was thinking, no, we're not doing that. What is interesting as I'm looking at this is this would be lovely to do with pencil lines where these I put the square lines in because it would give a really interest it would give those um kinds of sea shelly shapes that I used there would be one just here um yesterday in my sketchbook page my pattern exploration but this is fun because as I'm looking at it, these ones appear to be higher up than these ones. I know it's an illusion, you could turn it around the other way, but great fun for adding shadow and highlight, I think. And that could really be, make this really, really quite dimensional. Okay, let's have a look. Next thing, I need to fill this in here. So I think I'm going to put... some mushroom house in here I think that would be quite nice now then the hardest thing I'm going to have to do is to decide whether I put stripes here or dots or some other pattern I think I'm going to put I say dots circles because that's the traditional kind of sort of like fairy fairy toadstool thing and besides that dots are fun they are there we go so that'll keep some people really happy and um, let's give it a chimney as well
triangle to join the two pipes together. And indeed, I'm going to need another triangle here if I'm going to have a top that is anywhere near coming out. And this is where I get to use some pattern to allow There's some pattern for smoke, isn't it? Curls of it, it's appearing out. Very fine, but possible to colour in as well. I think I will just have a look, do one there. As if it's bolt coming out from behind you. I've really put I haven't drawn all of this very well, but as I'm going to clean it digitally, I can tidy this up. And I'm I'm aware now that I need to tidy this up as well. So let's have a look, let's just put another couple of swirls and so on. on there. It may not look like realistic smoke, but I'm just looking for an interesting pattern or texture that will work. Possibly. I'm sure I could have done it better, but if I really dislike it, it can be vanished. So far, the only time, only thing I've used a pencil for on this was drawing um, the lines for me to keep it within them so I can have a nice, neat, tidy edge. Ooh, talking of edges, I say tidy edge, I've already got something hanging out of the edge. I'm quite happy to have odd things sticking out. I find it, I think it's quite fun. Not everybody agrees with me though. Okay, let's have a look next. I think I'd like... What I'm going to do is I am going to... Pop an arch down here. So I create a space here for other things. And I am so tempted. I do love a skull. Is that one's the right way up? Oh, I didn't think. It's okay. Because I will edit and correct that digitally. because I can. So. Party skull. So I think we may just have another one here. I wonder if I can get one that's balancing on the tip of... Okay, and I've drawn this complete and I really shouldn't if I'm going to put a party hat on. But um, that'll be fine. Easy enough to clear up as well. Yeah, now then, in the background, I think I want some stars because I like stars very much. I love the night sky. I'm talking of night sky and things I love. Let's plop, pop a planet in. A ringed planet because, well, because And let's just 
finish the edge so I know where I'm going. Perhaps just a little one there. go. So that's looking interesting. This one here needs some more. I keep, I'm going back to it but I don't quite know what it needs. Hmm. Just thinking a moment. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put a heart dangle in here and perhaps another one because, well, because why not? I don't think you can ever have enough hearts in the design, although I have to be careful when I'm working for publishers because yeah. It's not a hearts themed book then. Too many hearts could be a problem, but I usually find ways of sneaking them in. There we go, so there's some dangly hearts. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I can sneak another one in. I can always sneak another one in. There's seven for a rainbow, if people wish. And then um, in the sky, over here I've used these like little bursts, like bubble bursts. I think that would be quite nice as well because they can be coloured in in a different colour to the background or blended or nothing done with them. Just there is a background pattern. It makes me feel happy. It's almost like, yes, I've put something in that space. I haven't put anything behind my cupcakes because I think they are happy as they are. Although, I could put some heart, some of those heart-shaped wafer biscuits in because perhaps they're ice cream. Instead of um, cupcakes. Or perhaps they're a mixture of both. There we are, so that's quite cute. Okie dokes. Okay, time for another pattern. Okay, how are we going to do this? What are we going to do here? I think I do know what I'm going to do. Okay. Let me pop. I'm going to split this in two. And I'm also going to split this into. I'm going to use the pencil for this though. Into roughly equal sized. sections roughly. Yeah I've got a dot grid I could make it quite exact but I'm not. Okay this is going to take me a little bit to work out. A heart border. I'm using the dip at the top of the heart as the point of the next heart above. I'm sure you can draw this in the opposite direction where you start the first heart here and then the points will become where you put that dip in but I've just chosen to do it this way today. 
either way works, whatever's easiest for you. So we've got a pile of hearts there, but I've not finished because there's space here to put a heart within a heart. Well, if I thought carefully, I'd have left half the space here because I am aware that you'd see part of a heart here. But that's okay. I can go back and sort that in a moment. Just sort that a little. When I go back and try and correct lines, I make them worse rather than better. I need to learn to leave them alone when they're in pencil, pen. If I hadn't touched them up, most probably no one would have noticed. Okay, let me have a look. So that would go like that. I won't be able to see the one on the other side. So. That completes it. There we are. How's that? Does that look good? I think it does. I know what else I'm going to do over here because there's some empty spaces. They're too small for stars. Needs but big enough that they need just something in it. So little dots. Yeah. Okay. This needs, this needs things as well, doesn't it? What can I do here? I could have things growing out to the top, but there's some of them a bit too close really for that. Hmm. I think it may be time for some stars here as well, perhaps. Because I think the spaces are too small for me to add any sort of motifs or um, patterns in. And below them there's a lot of stems. And so to if I was to use a background pattern, I'd have to add the pattern down here. And it would just become too confusing, too, too much of a muchness. So I am just putting some... Cut these little stars in just to fill some of those gaps, kind of. And where I can't quite fit a star in, I am going to put a circle so that these stars, sometimes they look a bit out artificial or just plonked there. Whereas if I add something like this, even down in these spaces here, between the stems that has the added added bonus of helping people work out which is which are stems which are background so it's a, a bit of a cue and a clue even though these are tiny little circles it's very busy but very nice there we are these are bugging me a little bit because they are very plain this one I think is just I'm just going to put lines between the zigzags so there's something there that can be coloured in and yet they're going to be wibbly wobbly all over the place because they can be. These ones, I think on this one, I'm just going to pop. Um, of these there so they look like looks almost like lace doilies doesn't it lace and I am going to just pop I'm going to put a black dot there but I am sure some colorists will go back and will go hmm, I'm going to put a gold dot there and then I think I will now do I put the line between them Shall I split them in half there? I think I'll just pop it between them this time. Just 
There we go. There's nothing at the top because on that one because it's a very tiny space. This one I think is okay as it is. I think if I added any more to it, um, I have been tempted, but I haven't. Um, this one, I'm going to add some lines there just to split that up. And then, oh, what can I do? I'm having a quick look over here. My the pattern page have opened up and seeing if there's anything in here that would be fun. I think what I will do is pop in some zigzags. I'm not going to try and get them in those, but that gives something extra. Yeah, that's a bit less um, uninteresting, a bit more interesting. Okie dokie. Right, I've got lots of space at the top now. I need to put, pop some things in here. So let me have a look here because I think I am going to pop in another art shape, but... I was tempted to do it like a cave with um, stalagmites and stalactites, but I'm not sure that would work. So I think I'm just going to create a pattern here. So I think that would be quite nice. I'll put black in there. Okay, so how am I going to do this? First start by splitting these up and I'm using um, double lines to split them, split the areas up. So instead of like, paired lines, double lines, I don't know what you want to call them. Okay, so what next? I think I'm going to pop a triangle pointing upwards because that point then gives me another place to use to split these into smaller sections like so and then I'm going to draw lines that are parallel to the sides of the triangle more or less. I'm not going to get it exactly right. Let's have a look here. What I'm trying to do is trying to make sure that these lines roughly meet up on the side of the double lines, the zigzags. So that's fun. That works nicely. And um, it will give me somewhere to have things growing, I think. Um, I'm going to do some, oh, what's this? Poke leaf here. Like this. Just so it follows the arch round. And I'm starting the stems right from the bottom corner of the leaf. In the same place each time. I'm trying to make the leaves about the same size and shape. But if they're Bit different nobody's really going to notice so that's quite nice now here is where I need to have a look so I would actually have a bit of a leaf there like that so that just completes that arch made it a bit thicker there but that's neither here nor there so that is something where I can grow perhaps some flowers from and in this case remember I said 
if you watched my video yesterday you'll have noticed I said oh perhaps I'll use some of these semicircular motifs in today's work well I'm using lots of semicircles but instead of adding a lot of texture and pattern in, inside them in this case I'm using them as the start for some flowers because I just think flowers would work nicely there just like that well, I think I'll finish this with you and I'll have a look at it at the overall and then I will Get the video edited and so on and turn my attention perhaps to some other things such as I need to get the social media post done as well for this okay um, this is going to be interesting because I do want to carry on with my floral motif there and also here So basically all I'm doing is just drawing parts of the petals so that that carries on and there's not an awkward um, end here to where they go so it forms a nice little arc as well. So I've got an arc of flowers. So these gaps here are perfect for putting Some leaves in, or leaves, I should say, not leaves. So, with these, I'm going to give them a nice plumptious stem in the middle. But I'm not taking this right to the end of the leaf. I'm going to leave that as it is because I quite like these leaves. There's quite a lot of open, or relatively open space in them but I find that's, that can work nicely because you can get the contrast between that inner vein and the outside one. Let's have a look, where are we? About halfway through is the answer. Um, I am just going to add a semicircle here. There are lots of semicircles or arcs in this particular drawing today. There we go. Righty ho ho, we need some things in this space here. Um, what I think I'll do there is I am going to pop lines behind this. So if I use these as the guides, I said I was going to finish, didn't I? Well, here. If I use these as guide for the spacing and direction of the, these lines, it's easier for me to split these sections up and keep the lines as if they're radiating from the centre of this, this circular kind of pattern, which is what they are actually doing. So I'm using the finer pen for this because it will be more subtle than the um, 05 micron. So even though this pattern may get a little bit busy, even though I may do nothing more than these lines that you see here now, It's easy to separate out one one thing from another. Do I want to separate them more? I think so. So again, I'm just going to do this by just by sight and a guesstimate. So I'm just splitting these areas into half again.
And I think that would actually work quite, that works nicely enough for me. Yeah, it does. Am I tempted to do little triangles? I am, just on the top bit. Sure. By digital wizardry, I may remove that centre line that's there, this at the top and the inside the triangle. So I think that would give an interesting edge. It would create these almost like paper folded up or folded, folded down, possibly. With that gone, it will enhance that, that feeling. So I can do that. Okay, I'm going to finish here because otherwise this, this video is already 50, 50 minutes long, blimey time flies by when I'm drawing. So I hope you've enjoyed this little insight into how I create colouring templates and you can see how even though I'm working directly in ink, no sketch, I've got no idea what, what I'm going to do but it's almost like as I'm talking to you I can see that I almost tell myself a story even though I may not do it in words and I think about things like oh I can only fit set six cupcakes in, that's okay we can leave a colour out. So we go for a mid blue instead of a light blue and a dark blue. We just go for one blue. So, you know, or or whatever, or blend them. You know, you could you could actually do a rainbow blend across the cupcakes, which would be quite fun. Start red red this end and end up purple here, going all the way through, or purple in the middle and spread out to others. Whichever, whatever floats your boat, it could be fun. Or having red, orange and yellow here. I don't know, orange, yellow, green yellow, green, blue, and so on. So you get rainbowish ones. Who knows? It's up to, it's up to people who colour it in. Um, but there, there can sometimes be a kind of story, even though I'm not aware of it. But speaking it out helps me to see that. Um, strange story, but we're digging into my mind. Which can be, obviously, or it seems to be, a very strange place, especially when it comes to imagination. So to make the point is that even though I'm working in pen, if I make a mistake, I no longer fret about it, like with the party hats, because I know that this is going to was going to have to be scanned in and cleaned up digitally because I'm working on dot grid paper before I can post it as a template for people to use. And so it's easy enough for me to clean up any um, places where I've been perhaps a bit clumsy with the pen or where I've made a mistake or where I've put things in I don't I'm not fussed on this here so I may actually remove all of this or some of it and put a couple more dangles of um, hearts in there which would be nice um, perhaps just a couple of wisps of smoke coming from there uh, you know so it, I'm a lot more laid back about working this way I think I always have been it's always the case of well is it Bob Ross who said, it's, it's no mistakes, there's only happy accidents? Well, there's only the happy little accidents, but there's also learning opportunities. And sometimes you don't realise that something doesn't work until you do it. But there are always ways to fix it, I, including acceptance and just go with it. So there we are. So I hope this has made you smile, especially my drunken skulls and monsters over here. Even the miserable one with the tentacles. Now we know why he's miserable. It's because these skulls are having a party on them. That's right. They, that's where they're partying on his tentacles and he's not happy about it. So <laughs> thank you for joining me. Keep warm if you're in the Northern Hemisphere and it's chilly. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere and it's hot or in a hot area of the world, keep cool. And find time every day to be creative. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for liking and see you again tomorrow most probably for a, a more draw with me kind of thing though this is draw with me as well so take care now bye bye Hoyle.